Hey, it's Matt here. Today we're talking vibe code security best practices. And I'm gonna walk through a checklist. We're gonna go through item by item on the list and talk about how you can implement these exact same security protections in your application if you're a vibe coder. Um, and so if you watch this video, my hope is that you'll get the 80 to 90% of most important and sort of low hanging fruit issues to prevent um, like common cybersecurity threats. Um, and my other hope is that you kind of gain an understanding of what you don't know, right? We all, when we're new to a concept, we don't know what we don't know. Um, and so, right, like in, in, the, in the whole idea of like getting harmed, right? It's like, if you don't know fire is dangerous and you stick your hand on a hot stove or you don't know heat is dangerous, you stick your hand on a hot stove, you're gonna learn about it really quickly. The same thing's true as if you put an API key uh, hard-coded into your app into the front end, you're gonna learn about it. My goal is to help you avoid that pain by watching this video, getting ideas, maybe helping you understand how you can take this research forward or, and prompt AI, prompt your way into understanding a lot of these concepts. So let's get started. Um, we're gonna walk through these one by one. Use HTTPS everywhere. That mostly has to do with the platform that you're building on. So one cool thing uh, is that, you know, Replit, by default, you're going to use HTTPS everywhere. Um, that's just how apps on Replit work. I think most modern frameworks use HTTPS. When you're building, check to see if the tool you're building with uses HTTPS. If you're building locally, that's like an additional step you have to check for. Um, so I'd say use a tool that uses HTTPS by default or prompt um, your AI systems. But Replit does that for us. Uh, so that's solution to this problem. Um, next, input validation and sanitization. Um, we want to validate and sanitize inputs on the front end. Uh, one of the cool things about Replit is that we handle that on the database by default by using what's called an ORM. It, otherwise, the way to do this, in my mind, would just be to prompt and say, um, basically, uh, um, validate and sanitize inputs to protect against um, XSS attacks. And then, you know, just give that to assistant, give that to your prompting tool of choice. You should be good. Now, the other important thing, right? If you prompt AI to do something, you have to make sure it actually does it. So you will then have to go through and actually make sure <laughs> that AI uh, does validate and sanitize your inputs. This does not diffuse us of the responsibility. So that guy is, uh, is done. That's just a simple prompting, um, I think, to cover that one. Um, Next one, this is kind of just a best practice. Don't store sensitive data in the browser. Um, cool thing, uh, or rather we'll do the like agent logo. I also like this, it kind of feels like a tier list a bit. Um, agent by default is going to architect apps with a uh, front end, a back end, and then a database. And the front end will communicate with the back end and the back end will communicate with the database or the back end will do sensitive stuff. That way you don't have to worry about the sensitive stuff. So don't store sensitive data in the browser. Um, Another really great way to check, right? Like if you're just like a little paranoid and you want to like make sure, say, um, take your AI tool, take assistance, say, hey, uh, is my app storing sensitive data in the front end? Text is starting to get a little cluttered here. And I can almost guarantee if you're using a tool, if you're using Replit, it'll have access to the entire file system and will be able to tell you. Um, so let's talk through a little bit more. CSRF protection. This one's a little bit more complicated. Um, has to do with form data, basically making sure uh, people don't mimic the form data. The reason why I have an asterisk here is because even though this is a little bit more complicated, the fix is not that complicated. Um, you can just literally prompt, right? Like, so also, whoops, didn't mean to move that. Uh, the fix here is just like basically prompt um help me implement csrf tokens uh for forms and just like that right prompt that verify the outputs spend some time understanding how the app works and what this thing is and i think you'll be good to go there uh again pretty low hanging fruit um there uh and this kind of comes more again from storing sensitive data in the browser no secrets in local storage or in client side code Never expose API keys in the front end. Um, by default, Replit Agent is going to pre prevent that. We use uh, secure storage. We use secrets. We have secure secret storage backed by GCP. Um, practically, what this means is that you don't want to hard code API keys and you don't want to make front end calls. You don't want your front end like firing off calls that have API keys in them. 
because people can see the API keys. You know, like a really good example is if I go to this this um, uh, this website. So I'm in. Um, normally I right click, but right clicking is there's a like different functionality in, in the site. Anyway, if I go to the the console here, you might not have used the console before, but you can see all the HTML in the site and you can see the network requests, right? So like if I dig into this request, I actually get, you know, like this entire session, right? And the thing is, um, anyone that uses your app can see those things as well. So if you're doing stuff in the front end of your application, what it, if you're watching this video, you're like, what, what do you mean, Matt? If you're doing stuff in, you know, in Replit Agent, most of the projects have a uh, similar structure. Um, we have a client server uh, sort of front and back end combo here. And in the client, you're supplying API keys, plain text information that's sensitive, you know, even making these calls with that data in it, people will be able to see that. And so it's really important to make sure you're not doing those things. Um, but again, you kind of get that out of the box on Replit. So now let's talk about backend security. Authentication fundamentals, use established libraries, proper password storage. Um, cool thing is that we have Replit account auth. I discussed this in a previous video, um, but Replit account auth basically means that um, you can log in with Replit. Um, so if I click log in with Replit, we're gonna use my Replit account to authenticate. That means that we at Replit handle the authentication infrastructure for you. Um, so the cool thing basically is that if you're building with agent and you say, uh, you know, hey, use uh, Replit account auth, and you include that in your prompt, um, agent will build with that authentication method. Call out here, this point is still important, right? You still have to, you know, you shouldn't store plain text passwords in databases. You should hash or salt and, and salt them. Um, that, again, is just a prompt away to where you say to agent, um, hash and salt. Well, actually, you don't need user passwords with Replit account auth. However, if you're storing other sensitive user data, you know, like sometimes the pattern I build with is authenticate with Replit account auth. And then, you know, for those users, we might also want to put additional data in the database. Uh, you can, you know, say hash and salt uh, sensitive data uh, for those users. And, you know, one, one thing we're going to talk about a lot in this backend security, and that's kind of why it has this asterisk, is anytime you start handling user data, anytime you start having users and they give you information, um, they're trusting you with that information, right? And it's really easy to break trust. And it's actually really important to think about the types of information you're accepting from users, what personally identifiable information is, like user emails, user names, all this stuff. You got to protect that. And you people trust you with that. You have to, to make sure you're doing the right thing with it. So authentication kind of fundamentals. Proper password storage is largely handled by Replit Agent and uh, Replit Account Auth. Hashing and salting, that's kind of a follow-up you might want to you might want to do. Um, authorization checks. Uh, again, we're going to go with agent on this one. If you're building with an AI tool and you implement it with a Replit account auth, it's going to put um, author uh, authorization checks. Although we're also going to drop a little, little warning symbol here because this is a, you know, if you have like a very complicated application and you start adding on additional endpoints or adding on additional screens, basically what I'm saying here is you need to make sure that if something exists and you want it to be protected by auth, that it's actually protected by auth. And so um, I think this, uh, we'll move this guy up here a little, a little bit more. This is just a lot of attention to detail. Uh, so if you want something protected, if you build with Replit Agent or if you implement authorization in another way, you have to make sure that those things are are uh, hidden and, and permission is verified. Um, even before you perform the action. What, like, a lot of this is thinking from first principles. I think this is an important point to mention um, because you have to really ask yourself, when a user clicks this button, what is happening? Fundamentally, what is happening in my application? And if you can understand that, if you understand, okay, well, when they click the button, it's submitting a form. The form is going to the back end and then to the database. And the front end's validating the input, so we're safe there. You know, uh, we have type safety and we have checks uh, on the database, because as we'll discuss in a minute, Replit has ORMs. We're safe there, and it's getting written to the database. Uh, the sensitive information is getting hashed and salted. Uh, we're safe there, right? And we know that a user can only click that form if they're logged in. End-to-end -end secure, right? 99% of cases you don't have to worry about. If you can understand what's happening in your application, you will be much better off. You might be saying, Matt, this is very complicated. Yes. 
building apps is very complicated. However, also note that a lot of these are taken care of by Replit Agent. This is the more in-depth video. And what I'm trying to help you understand is like all the details that go into this and how much time you really could spend nerding out. Um, API endpoint protection, we're actually just going to drop a warning symbol on this one because if you're implementing an app and you're building APIs, again, and you're saying like we need authorization checks, um, you need to make sure that your a APIs are uh, authenticated. Sometimes that means doing stuff like a uh, course or, or uh, making sure that peop that um, calls from a different domain can't access um, your app. So basically what you want to say is, the only thing that should hit my API endpoints within my app is my app, unless you're building an API for a bunch of people, in which case you need a token. Um, so there are ways to do this. There are ways to implement API endpoint protection. Um, there are actually several ways to do this. You could ask assistant or ask agent, how do I properly um, authenticate endpoints in my app, right? And given that this is so specific to your application, that would be my recommended route. And you'll probably get a really good answer for how to implement those things. SQL injection prevention. Another really cool thing that you just get out of the box because um, Asian actually does use an ORM. We use an ORM in every app. You know, if we go here and we look at the schema for our app, you can see we're defining a model for our database. Some lights just turned off. It's getting dark here. Um, and uh, we have sort of like, some definitions, we're defining the schema uh, and protections here, basically, uh, against this the server because uh, we have type safety and we're building with um, an ORM. So the ORM, you can think about, just kind of like sits in between the back end and the database um, and um, ensures that, number one, there's no SQL injection because it's going to wipe that input, but then two, also that... Um, there's type safety because you're defining the types in the file I just showed you. We're defining exactly what those schemas look like. Um, and you'll never get raw SQL with user input, which is cool. The other thing is um, if you build out your front end properly, right, and you're validating uh, input and sanitizing it, you also kind of don't have to worry about this as much. Um, next, basic security headers. Another one that's just kind of like... Uh, Kind of table stakes, also kind of annoying, um, but really, really easy to fix. Like, especially if your app has an HTML file, right? Like if we look at this file um, and we go to client uh, and there's index.html. I have no idea how long uh, that security warning was popping up on the screen. Uh, so uh, we might have to edit that out. But um, basically, if you're... That's how locked in I am in this video. I got like security warnings popping up on the screen. I'm just like, user security, we must, we must teach the people. Um, <laughs> basically, like uh, security headers, you can go to index.html. Um, and headers are just something that you can implement in HTML. Uh, and you just say something like, um, <laughs> basically, implement this stuff dot 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 and say x frame options you know x content options everything i have up here that's what i would do it's really simple the cool thing is that you can go to something like securityheaders.com um and like scan a site uh like rapidly um no comment uh for your content security con policy for your x content options for your refer policy you do have to be careful with some of these um because you can break your app uh so just be careful there um but that's a call out next basic uh or no we just talked about basic security headers so that's that's just like done we're just gonna like oh uh we're just going to duplicate this guy we'll drop this over here we're gonna prompt our way out of that one ddos protection other cool thing uh replit deployments go to google cloud by default so that's like our back end we we make it easier for you so you don't have to worry about it um and yeah we protect against uh distributed denial of service attacks because we have google cloud armor so if you deploy to replit you just don't worry, have to worry about it okay practical security habits keep dependencies updated most vulnerabilities come from outdated libraries true also that's on you like we can't do that for you yet um however um you know you can ask agent, you can ask assistant, are my packages out of date? Do I need to update these packages? So let's uh, let's add that um, here. We'll say like, are uh, my packages 
out of date. Um, can you check? It will tell you how to check for these things. I almost guarantee it. Proper error handling. Don't expose sensitive details and error message. A little asterisk because, like, you know, I feel like this is one we always have to look out for. Again, what we're looking at with the console, uh, if we go to more tools here and we go to developer tools, uh, we go to the console. Like, these are, like, messages, like, basically debugging messages from this application. Um, if you're, like, debugging and you're printing things to the console, and then you deploy your app, people can see those things. So don't debug security information and print it to the console. Ask assistant. Am I printing uh, unsecure info to the console? Again, I'm trying to give you ways to check if you're doing any of these things and fix them quickly. Um, secure cookies. Uh, HTTP only secure same site attributes. This is another one of those ones where I would just say like, um, this only arises if you have users and you need to worry about cookies or worry about sessions. So that's a bit more of an advanced topic to begin with. Um, Replit account auth will help handle that for you, right? So that's just like an agent and Replit thing. Um, and then otherwise you can say, um, help me implement secure cookies. Um, so we're really going with the vibe coding solution for most of these, but it, it's still valid. Uh, last, file upload security. Um, if you let people upload files to your site, you want to make sure uh, that those files are you know secure. We're going to prompt our way out of this one too. This is like kind of you just need to like, hey, make sure that this stuff isn't malicious um, or uh, we restrict the file types and sizes. One cool thing I will say about Replit is that because we use Google Object Storage, Google Cloud Storage, my bad, on the back end, um, no one can access these files. Like by default, we limit the sort of access controls. So you can know that they're safe. Um, and last, again, another kind of like just general thing, rate limiting. Um, all API endpoints, especially authenticated related ones, you need to rate limit. And that is probably going to look like, um, hey, you know how I like to say, hey, I just, that's just how I feel when I'm talking to AI. Hey, um, <laughs> help me rate limit uh, my app. Uh, on XYZ endpoint. So again, this requires you to understand what endpoints are and what if they exist on your app and then to say this, but in my experience, AI is really good uh, at doing these things. So this is a bit of a longer video, but uh, I'm gonna provide this checklist. I'm gonna provide you know the video. Uh, and my goal here is for you when you're building apps for people to be able to walk through these like 15 things in 20 minutes and say, I prompted through these. I'm like 95% sure my app is locked down and safe. Um, or I know I don't have to even worry about this thing, right? Like, I, this is like people talk about DDoS or whatever. I don't have to worry about it because I'm on Replit. Um, and yeah, maybe be a bit more, sleep a bit better at night, but then also start to understand some of these security basics when you're going out there and building apps. But again, I'm Matt. This has been um, Security Basics, uh, some advanced security features and checklists that you can walk through to be sure you're vibe coding the safest apps possible. But until next time, peace.